Amazing. Are you guys ready for Chapo? How, how long was that? Not long enough? Man, I'm thankful for lungs and oxygen. So, what's this week, guys? Thanksgiving! Turkey, salad, if you're vegan, salad and more salad, vegetables, mashed potatoes, corn, no butter. Love it. No school. What? Who's thankful? Who's thankful for no school? Who's thankful for parents? Who's thankful for a house? Who's thankful for Jesus? Yes, I am so thankful. This week, even though it's going to be one day that we say we're thankful, we should be thankful 364 times, right, a day? 366, well, there's 365 days in a year, <laughs> right? Am I right? Or And 52 weeks? Yes, exactly. So I'm thankful every day. Listen up, guys. I'm thankful every day that we get to share the word with you, that you guys get to learn about Jesus, that you guys are healthy. I'm so thankful for many things, and I hope you guys are too. Sometimes we forget how blessed we are until we see people struggling and not being able to eat, not be able to have clothes, new things. So always be thankful. And you got to remember, too, that we're such a blessed and country that some countries don't even have running water or bathrooms in the house. Some people have to go outside and use the restroom. Gross. <laughs> right? So you got to be thankful for that, thankful for running water, thankful for electricity, video games. You know how many people in the world don't even know what video games are? A lot. Exactly. So who's thankful? So let's go ahead and sing a worship song called Thankful. Get on up. If you guys have offering, you can bring your coins money, bitcoins, cyber cash, whatever you guys have, into the microwave of Bobo. And then I'll, I'll heat it up and make some more money. That's not how m money grows. You got to invest. <laughs> To think about the goodness of the Lord He gives me everything I need and so much more So I just want to lift my hands And say that I love Him I just want to lift my heart in praise And I want to be thankful I want to be grateful I want to remember everything That the Lord has To think about the goodness of the Lord He gives me everything I need and so much more So I just want to lift my hands And say that I love Him I just want to lift my heart in prayer
hear me. Welcome back. I do not have my scroll today. I just wanted to talk to you. I've had a really bad week. Can I talk to you guys today? As you know, my name is Samuel Seabury. I am the King's Messenger. I have been having a rough week. Have you guys had a rough week before? Yes. Well, what happened was the king has told me to tell his people that he wanted to have a feast at 6 p.m. So I made a mistake. And instead, I told the people that the dinner will be at 6 a.m. So everybody arrived, and there was no food available. I cannot believe I made that mistake. But I am so thankful that the king did not go off with my head. I don't think that king does kind of things like that. But I am so thankful that he forgave me, which reminds me of our Bible story today. Are you guys ready to hear about our Bible story? Let's go ahead and let's listen right up. Let's galley on up as you can hear the horses in the background. David was the king of Israel. As king, David's responsibilities included leading the army. One spring, David sent out the army and he put another man in charge of them. David stayed in Jerusalem. <laughs> One evening, David looked out from the roof of his palace and saw a beautiful woman named Bathsheba. Bathsheba was the wife of Uriah, one of the best warriors in David's army. David sent his messengers to get Bathsheba, and she came to David's house. Later, Bathsheba told David that she was going to have a baby. The baby would be David's. David knew what he had done was wrong. David should not have a baby with someone who was not his wife. So David made a plan to make sure no one found out that Bathsheba's baby was his. David called Uriah home from the battle and told him to go spend time with his wife. But Uriah didn't think it was fair for him to relax at home while the other men were at war. He slept on David's doorstep and refused to see his wife. David's plan was not working, so he made up another plan, this time he instructed Joab, who was leading the army, to send Uriah into the hardest part of the battle so he would be killed. So Joab sent Uriah to the most dangerous part of the battle and Uriah was killed. David took Bathsheba into his house to be his wife and she had a baby boy. God knew what David had done and he was not happy with David. God sent Nathan the prophet to talk to David. Nathan told David a story about a rich man who had many animals. Whenever a traveler came, the rich man did not offer his own animal. Instead, he took a poor man's lamb, the only lamb he had, and gave it to the traveler to eat. David was angry. The rich man should die, he said. You are the man, Nathan said. God had given David a position of great power, but David killed Uriah to take his wife. David realized he had sinned against God. David deserved to die. You won't die for this, Nathan assured David, but God will punish you. Your son will die instead. David confessed his sin and prayed, God, create a clean heart for me. David realized he could try to please God with sacrifices, but that wouldn't be enough to pay for his sin. God wanted David's heart to change so that he would not want to sin again. All right, listen up, oh, wow. Listen up, oh, wow. So I'm so thankful God gives us these stories in his word. I'm going to ask a few questions. See if you were listening to the Bible story. Ruthie, you always listen to the Bible story. So who was Yura's wife? Or how do you say his name? Ryan. Forgot the name. That's not her name. Uh, Abigail had her hand up. Bathsheba is correct. 
<laughs> she likes bath. That's, that's why she's called Bathsheba. No, that's not why. How did David plan to kill Uriah? Judah? Who? One person's name. What's his name? Do you guys remember his name? Ryan? Amelia? David. That is correct. Amelia got it right. So, God forgave David when he repented of his sin, but sin always comes with a price. God spared David's life, but many troubles came in his life. Even David, the greatest of Israel's king, and a man after God's own heart, was a sinner in need of salvation, which is just like all of us. Punishment for sin is death. That is right. And that we are all sinners. Even the person at the highest top of the food chain, the president, leaders, teachers, we're all sinners. When we sin, we can receive God's forgiveness because God sent his son Jesus to pay the price for our sin. Jesus died the death we deserve so that we could be made right with God, right? So who is our king? Jesus is our king forever and ever. Yes, one, two, three. Jesus is our king forever, and he rules over the? Over the? The world. That is correct. Not just America, not just Spain, not Europe, not China, not Japan. But the world, everywhere, not Hawaii, no, everywhere, the world. So that prepares us for our memory verse. This is our last week for the memory verse. And our last week, uh, Samuel Seabree, I hope you guys embraced him and enjoyed him. He said ent until next time, but there is no next time. But maybe we'll see him again somewhere on Broadway, maybe. You never know. But let's go ahead and read the Bible verse. One, two, three. For God is king over all the sing praises with a God re reigns over the nations. God sits on the Psalms 41, 7, and 8. Good job, guys. All right, we have one more last song. I know you guys have your activity page still to do and snacks. So let's sing one more worship song that Josiah has picked for us. And let's listen to Josiah's pick. Josiah, <laughs> Josiah. No. 
Great job, everybody. Thank you so much for coming to church. Thank your parents, your guardians, your neighbors, whoever brought you here. Thanks for coming. We'll see you next week. Happy Thanksgiving. Tell everyone why you're thankful. Show love around the world. Tell them about Jesus. Right? Be thankful, everybody. See you next time. Bye.